Example 7 uh, involves the exponential growth and decay function, which is here. And it's pretty obvious to use that because it says um, find the exponential growth function. And it's called the exponential growth function, so that should let you know that, hey, we're probably going to use that thing. Um, and if you look at the sheet I gave you, the exponential growth function says that the final amount of anything that's growing or decaying exponentially is equal to the initial amount of that object times e to the kt power, where n sub t represents the final amount, n sub 0 is the initial amount. k is some constant of growth or decay, and t is time in whatever unit of time you want to deal with. Just know that if you change the unit of time to something like, let's say it's years, and they say, how many months will it take? You're going to get a year answer. You're going to have to convert it to months. So if you're dealing with years, it's going to be years. If you're dealing with months, it's going to be months. Uh, so keep that in mind. There's a problem almost exactly like this on the test. There's a part A and a part B. Part A looks like this. Part B looks like that. And this should say example 7, by the way. And I'm going to do 7 and 8 together because they go with each other. All right, so... Basically, what I need to do with this formula is I need to establish those things. Now, the formula bank you get on your test, if you've looked at it already, you'll notice that it doesn't tell you what all these things represent. So I don't give you this formula along with all this stuff. I just give you the formula. So it's up to you to know what all that stuff is for each formula. So make sure that you're making strides towards learning that stuff. So we have a town whose population was 16,400 in 1990 and 20,200 in 2000. So this is information, this is information that's going to help us find some of these things. One of those populations is the initial and one is the final. Which one do you think is the initial one? 16,400. And how do we know that? Lower. Yeah, right. One thing is lower. And it obviously says growth, right? Yeah. So we're expecting it to grow, so we expect it to get bigger. The other reason we know that's the n sub 0 is that's the earlier year. Mm -hmm. So 1990 happens before 2000. n sub 0 is always before n sub t. So 20,200 is the final amount of population in this specific city that we're dealing with. All right? And the civil engineer in charge of the population prediction function here has determined that it's an exponential growth happening in the city. Okay, so you have to have that. that. But if it says find the exponential growth, you can assume that's what it is. Now. Um, how much time has passed? Ten years. How do we know that? 2000 minus 1990. You take the final year minus the beginning year, that tells you how many years has passed, and ten years. Always pay close attention to unit on time. So that's ten years has passed. If it says the population was 16,400 at noon and 20,200 at five o'clock, it'd be five hours would be time. Supposed to be a really fast growing city. Don't think I'd want to be there. Anyway, what we don't know is K. All right, there's four variables. Anytime you get four variables, they're going to give you three. And you have to find the fourth. If there's five, there's going to give you four. You have to find the fifth. That's just what's going to happen. So K is what we need to find out. K is called the growth constant. And I know it's a growth constant because the population grew. If the population decreased, it would be a decay function or a decay constant. So, again, just K's value, positive or negative, based on that information. So, as soon as you see find the exponential growth function, create the function structure, and then identify everything you can find out from the words they give you that's going to help you set up this equation. Then, we substitute everything in that we know. So, n sub t is 20,200 equals n sub 0 is 16,400, e is e, k is something I don't know yet, and t is 10. And kt means k times t, so k times 10 is what happens up there. Keep in mind that both k and 10 are exponents. They're both up in the power level of this thing. Now, just to fix an issue that some of you have been having, all right? If I'm here, I can't log both sides yet. Okay, when we did exponential equations, let me, let me go back to that lesson real quick. If I have 3 to the x equals 7, I can do that because if I log this, and I log this, this 3 to the x, the x can go out in front, right? Mm -hmm. If I have um, 17, e to the x equals 45, and I log both sides, like so, 
That's illegal because if I try and take this x out here, that's implying the 17 is also raised to the x power, which it isn't. Okay? You can't log both sides if there's a number in front of your exponential expression. So that's what's going on here, and it happens almost every time in these problems. So know that this type of structure is pretty common in these problems. And I can't do anything until this is just a number equals e to a power. So I'm going to divide both sides by 16,400. So that successfully gets rid of that 16,400 coefficient in front of the e. If I beautify the right-hand side up a little bit, I get e to the 10k. All right. Now the left-hand side, we can see, obviously, is a fraction, right? I would rather it stay a fraction than you make it a decimal. And here's what you can do. Obviously, it's 202 over 164. Maybe you can reduce beyond that. I don't know. Can but, you um, chop both the zeros? Yeah, we can chop the zeros for sure. But then, does the rest of it reduce? Maybe, maybe not. In fact, it's even, so yeah, it reduces at least by a little bit, right? But if you want to get a reduced fraction on your calculus, real simple. You type in the fraction 20,200. I'll start with what we had. 20,200 divided by 16,400. Just write the fraction as a division problem. Top divided by bottom. And then in your math menu, the very first one is frac. So we hit math, enter. Puts this little arrow frac next to it. All that's telling the calculators, work this out. Give me the answer as a fraction. And it does. And it reduces the fraction to the lowest terms. Saves you some time and energy. You guys know how to reduce fractions to the lowest terms. So I don't want to waste your time doing stuff you already know how to do when the calculator can do it so much more rapidly and get you down to that lowest term. Uh, if it ends up being like a eight-digit uh, number over an eight-digit number, it's going to go decimal. Okay, so if it, sometimes it'll give you a decimal answer. Just put a decimal in that case. But um, most of the time it's going to be a fraction. That'd be better. All right, 101 over 82 is exactly what that equals. Uh, the decimal version of that would be close to what that equals. So I'd rather get the exact. All right, so at this point, this equals this. And again, e to a power equals numbers. Now logging both sides is legal. So I'm going to log the left-hand side I'm using ln, which is my preference anyway. But since I've got e to a power, it's, it's probably what you want to do. Now let me just show you this real quick. Does everybody agree that log base e is the same as ln, right? Mm -hmm. So ln of e to the 10k. I don't have to do this every single time, so I just want you to understand why I'm going to do this. If I ln this side and I got e to the power, those match, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm simply going to get the power out. That's on purpose. Okay, I'm choosing ln in that situation because that's what happens. Very, very simple to deal with. I don't have to explain that every time I do it, though. So if I have e to a power and I do ln, I'm simply going to get the power out because of the base matches the base, so the power is the outcome. All right? So if ln of 101 over 82 is equal to 10k, we divide both sides by 10. That gives me k is equal to that. At this point, this is where I want to actually round my answer. So I'm going to type in ln, and I'm taking the log of that entire fraction, so parentheses, 101 divided by 82, end parentheses, that's the end of the logarithm, divided by 10, only divided by one number, so no parentheses necessary, hit equals, I get 0.02084127, four decimal places where I want you to go with okay. So k is equal to 0.0208, that's not the answer to the problem, that's just what k equals. Alright, is everybody comfortable with finding k there? This is a pretty straightforward thing that's going to happen every time you do an exponential growth function. They're going to tell you the beginning, the ending, and how many years, minutes, hours, whatever passed. Your first job is going to be to find k. All right? Then, once you know what k is, we want to write the exponential growth function. This is what an exponential growth function looks like, with the one exception, n sub 0 and k are both constants. So the population began at 16,400, right? That's not going to change. If you look back in history, and the population was something at some point in time, that's what it was. As time goes on, the population is changing, but at 1990, the population was 16,400 constant. All right? K is a constant of growth. Constant, doesn't change. Time is changing, the final population is changing. These two variables are going to stick around as variables. So to create a good exponential growth function, you put the final amount unknown, is equal to the initial amount known, e to the k, which is 0.0208, times t, which is also unknown. All right. 
what this function does, and that, that is the answer we're looking for. That's my exponential growth function. And I'm going to say t equals 0 represents 1990. Include that in your exponential growth function. Tell me what the 0 year is, what the beginning year is. Okay, so all I have for information here is what the population was in 1990, what it was in 2000. But now that I've got this exponential growth function, I can figure out what the population is going to be any time. If I don't know how many years passed, that's t. Stick t in there, I'll work it out. With that in mind, moving on to example 8. And again, it does say example 1 should say 7 here. Use the function from example 7, in other words, this guy here, to figure out what the population would be in 2005, round to the nearest 100. So, if we look at the year of 2005, and I want to consider what does t equal, Hey, anybody have an idea on how we're going to find t? 2005 minus 1900. You simply take the year you're in, which is 2005, and subtract the year you started off with, and that gets you how many years have passed. So t is equal to 15 years. And the question is, what is n at 15 years being the population? And my formula is right there. I simply take 16,400 times e to the point 0208 times t, which we've determined is 15 years. Just like that, that numerical expression there is going to tell me what the population is going to be in 2005. If I get the calculator out, and I type it in, 16,400 times, hit second e, so ln. It always gives me e care at parentheses. Both of these guys are the power to make sure that entire multiplication happens inside the parentheses. So 0 0.0208 times 15 and parentheses. Don't put a bunch of parentheses in there. Just beginning parentheses for beginning, the product, and the end parentheses. Hit equals. And we see the population in 2005 should be 22,404. So we'll round, round, we'll round in a minute. 404.93697. If we just go ahead and get the number, and then we can round afterwards. Okay, so calculator's done. Now I get to use my brain a little bit. It does say to the nearest hundred, so the hundreds place is right here. So we're going to chop off 4.93697 people, and we'll say the population in 2005 is 22,400 people. All right. So again, for the sake of the the test coming up next week. There's going to be a problem just like example 7 and 8 put together. Part A is going to be find the exponential growth function, so you're looking for this. And then part B is going to say what's the population in this year, and then, then you've got to use that function correctly, figure out what t equals for the year zero you have, and then just substitute the numbers and get your answer out that way.